Here's a quick video that shows you how to take a series of images on the ESP32 cam and save them onto an SD card. This could form the basis of a home surveillance system. Personally, I'm using it as a cheap camera for taking time-lapse videos. If you want the Arduino IDE code I'm using, there's a link to it in the description. Later in the video, I'll run through some of the most common issues while taking still images on the camera, including the notorious green tint problem. So to get started, I've opened the Arduino IDE and selected my ESP32 CAM board. So I'm going to use the web server example as a basis of my code. So go to File, Examples, ESP32, Camera, and Camera Web Server. So I'll click on camerawebserver.ino, which is the main file. So what I'll do is to go through and remove anything related to the Wi-Fi functionality because we won't need that. We won't also need the streaming. So I'll quickly run through and do that. So that has left us with some very basic code here. And now it is time to start putting in the actual camera code for saving still images. So the first thing we need to do is to implement the SD card functionality. And we can do that by including this file sd underscore mmc.h. So that's the header file for the SD card. So that goes at the top there. So a bit further down, I'll add a couple of lines here. The first one is this line and we'll give our photos a prefix. So they will be saved as photo underscore and then a number. That will be the following line here. So if you want to name your image file something different, you can change this char here. Incidentally, it's really critical to put the slash here. You will get errors if you don't include it in the file name. So I'll scroll down to the setup routine here and I'll scroll past all the setup routine for the camera itself. Okay, this looks a good part where the Wi-Fi was previously initialized. So the first thing to do, we'll initialize the SD card that's using this dot begin function here. When you come to run your code, you can look at this serial monitor and see these lines being output here. So we can actually check to make sure that there is a card in there, which is using these lines of code here. So card type is an enumerator. So if it comes out as card underscore none, then it appears the SD card slot is empty. It's an incredibly common mistake to make while you're testing it and taking the card out to look at the files on your computer. So now I'll run through the code I've added to the loop. This is the code that will take the images. So there's quite a few lines here. Again, if you want the code, there's a link in the description below. So line 127 here is critical. This is the routine that gets called to actually take the photo. So it's called ESP underscore camera underscore FB underscore get. So if the capture fails, then it will write this line here in the outputs. So there's various reasons why it might not actually take the picture. Note there's a return statement here. So if it takes the picture, but it doesn't work, then it will return out of the loop and proceed no further. If it has taken the photo, then here is a string for the photo name. So it uses the prefix which we used earlier, that was photo underscore. Remember that the prefix must always have a slash at the start. And we're saving JPEGs. So here is the routine where it opens the file and saves the file. Again, if it can't save the file, it will leave an error message here. Note that there's no error handling code here in case the SD card is full. So if you're intending to take hundreds and thousands of photos, then it's a good idea to put some code here to check that there is actually room on the card to save the image. So file.write and the buffer and the length here, that actually saves the file. So it will output to the serial port when it's actually saved the image. And it will then increment the photo number. So we'll have photo underscore zero one, two, three, four. We'll have a whole series of them. This makes it really easy to import them into a package to make time lapse videos. After that, we close the file and the camera. There is a delay here of 10 seconds. 
So the code at present will take a photo every 10 seconds. You can of course change the delay here if you want to change it and take them less frequently. If you're taking photos at very large time intervals, say every 10 minutes or every hour or something, then you might want to use the ESP32 sleep functions. This will ensure it draws a lot less power. So now the code is ready, I've set up my little film studio here. So here's the LEGO film set, here's the ESP32 CAM module. I've remembered to put the SD card in the slot there. Now I will connect up the USB so I can upload the code from the Arduino IDE onto the app. So I just make sure that COM13 is selected, yeah that's okay, so I will upload the sketch. If you've already got code on the ESP32 CAM board then sometimes you have to press the reset button to get it to upload properly. I don't know if this is the case. Okay so, uh, no it's okay this time. So it says it's writing and it's uploading. Okay, so when the hard resetting via RTS pin message appears here, remember to disconnect the programming loop. So I'll do that and then I'll point the camera in a general direction. Incidentally, if you are setting up a shoot like this, it's best to upload the webcam code first, the camera web server code, just so you can get it exactly pointed to where you want it to go to. I'll go to the serial monitor, press the reset button and it should start taking photos. So it says initializing, you'll notice it flashed then so it's just taken photo number one. So we've done two photos, I'll take a couple more, oh the blue tack is failing so <laughs> maybe I'll hold it by hand. I don't know how close this camera can actually focus. You can get different lenses, I don't know if I do a macro one, I'll do another video about that. So let's take a couple more, try and hold it in place. So that's four, and we'll do one for luck. Okay, it saved it, so I'll disconnect the USB, and then I'll put the card into my computer. I have a big SD card holder, this normally comes with the micro SD card. So I'll have a look at the images in my very old PaintShop Pro. So unfortunately the photo is a bit blurry, I'll have a look at the others. Uh, they're also a little blurry, but the good news is that it has taken photo 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Incidentally if you are taking a series of images then for some reason the first image always appears to have a green tint to it. For this reason I will probably change the code and have the first image as image 0. If you're making a time lapse video then it's normally best to start with photo underscore 1. So if we give ourselves a 0 to just throw away then that will probably make it easier to make the movie. So you'll notice while the camera was in operation that it flashes whenever an image is being taken. There are various sophisticated methods for stopping this, but I couldn't get any to work. So I would recommend just doing something very simple and just blue tacking over the LED itself, which is here. Having said that, the flash is actually quite useful if you're taking photos, especially when you're doing time-lapse photos. However, if you're doing things like nature shots, nighttime shots or something then it can be quite distracting. So this is the easy non-technical solution. So if you look at my images you can see that they're quite small. This one is 1024 by 768 pixels. So here is how to change the size of the images that are captured. So in the Arduino IDE the line of code we need to change is where it says set underscore frame size. You'll see there's an enumerator here for frame size and I've used frame size underscore XGA and if you put your mouse over it you can see that the value is 1024 by 768. If I uncomment this line I was using previous, I think this is the default line, this is QVGA 
and this is 320 by 240 so obviously this one is really small so how can we find different values for this and what's the maximum value so i found out if you go to the esp32 camera software repository on github and then search for frame size you can find all the different options i'll link to this in the description below so we need to go to driver include sensor h and then scroll down to where is it ah uh, here it is so type def enum here and these are the different frame sizes supported so the biggest will probably go up to UXGA, which is 1600 by 1200. There are values for much larger. I don't think there's a 4K yet, but it will go up to, yes, 2560 by 1920. Apparently, this will only work on your specific ESP32 cam camera itself. So. If you don't know what it is, then I would just keep going up. And if the images don't save correctly, then you've gone too far. So all you have to do is to copy one of these values and then paste it here and replace the other value. So yes, it says it's 2560 by 1920. Incidentally, if you do want to make a movie of your static images, then you can download the free shortcut video editor. I'll put a link in the description below. Basically, you then just need to name your images as a series. This is why I suggested changing the code. So going back to the code, I recommend if you change int photo number to zero to have the first one. The first one is normally green for some unknown reason. So you can simply delete that one and the first proper one will be called photo underscore one. So to make a time lapse, you simply drag in your photos that you want into the playlist here. And you can see now I have 30 images listed here. So make sure they're named consecutively with one for the first one. So if you click on the first one and go to properties, then you need to click on this image sequence here. So as you can see, my animation worked really well and the ESP32 cam is actually pretty good for doing time-lapse photography. Incidentally, in my next video, I'll explain how to change the code slightly so that you can take much longer time interval time-lapses. It is possible to sleep the ESP32 to save on power. So I hope you found this video useful. As I said before, if you have any questions about the ESP32 cam, then do drop a comment below. Thanks for watching.